Hi, Tulip here, welcoming you to coffee time. Only this is like an evening coffee time. The sun is setting in the western sky uh, right in front of me. And I'm actually going to talk about the night time. The summer is here in New England and it is also a great time to observe the night sky when the nights are warm enough or when the stars are out and the moon is out and even on new moon nights. It seems often uh, I just forget that night is such an inevitable part of life and most of the nights, the beautiful night time that we get are spent on sleeping away and actually the sky has so much and the darkness has so much to give us than just the sleeping hours or the quietness and the stillness that it offers. Night and days are also a part of life that comes with something negative, something positive, something absent or present. Night comes to take the day away and again when night leaves on cat feet, the day comes in. But in between those hours of the night light, how much we dream about in our sleep. Some of us spend restless nights and on such restless nights sometimes, I think it's really awesome in summer days to step out if possible and have a look at the night sky. All the stars that are hiding and that are out. All of them have something to tell. For have we not forever been stargazing since the days we were young? Days when stars and moon held more than just the day night thoughts. Those are carefree days when it was more joyful. No worries. As we grow older, we become adults. Stars and moon are still there. They are still there to support our emotions. We are happy, we are sad. But the night sky hangs with like an giving its arms to rest on it and for us to trace back the thoughts of the day that had come or the months or the years that we have been passing on this earth. There's a famous writer called Sharat Chandra in Bengali literature who also said that the night has a beauty, the darkness had a beauty of its own. Yes, it does. And these days when I step out or stand beside a window at night, I can hear the frogs, you know, croaking away. Sometimes an owl joins. And those are the times when I feel really special, like, oh, I've got an owl with me. Then I have to step out and sometimes walk into the garden. It's like joining the night creatures, the nocturnals out there and feeling that awesome part of life which quite often is spent on sleeping because as human beings we use the daylight to live, to get by each and every day, earn our bread, take care of families, juggle between home and work. But the night is so special. It's so special when there, there is a summer breeze going through and it touches your face, your hair, and it's just like a gentle kisses from the wind. And in those times, you know, we all, want to hold on to those 
magical moments. Anything that's peaceful in this restless world, in these days of COVID-19, when our heart is a turmoil, our soul is restless, but nights are so special, so much to offer in the terms of a restful place, tranquility, solace, quiet love. But then, then I remember from a young age, I have had the good luck to enjoy the night time. When I was growing up in the village, my grandparents and I would take small things, wooden tools that we used to sit on and sit under the sky in our front yard and just sit there, you know, gazing listlessly for hours until we felt sleepy. We didn't have a TV or anything, anything screened at that time. The night sky was like a big show, a big movie, a natural theater where we would watch, we'd tell stories to each other sometimes and just wonder at the stars and send all our wishes. Stars are wonder, stars are bright. I wish I may, I wish I might. Oh well, I can't tell you what I'm wishing for. And I hope if you see a star, a falling star, you make a wish and I hope it all goes right. And before I go, I'd like to read a few lines from Ben Okri. This book, A Way of Being Free, he begins with the nightlife. And in fact, to tell you the truth, it is one of his, these books that really got me more into enjoying nights. So here we go. The world in which the poet lives does not necessarily yield up the poetic. In the hands of the poet, the world is resistant. It is only with the searching and the molding that the unyielding world becomes transformed in a new medium of song and metaphor and the chapter is while the world sleeps it is not surprising therefore that poets seem to be set against the world the poets need to be up at night when the world sleeps needs to be up at dawn before the world awakes needs to dwell in odd corners where tower is said to reside, needs to exist in the dark places where spiders forge their webs in silence, near gutters where the underside of our dreams fester. Poets need to live where others don't care to look and they need to do this because they don't, they can't sing to us of all the secret and public domains of our lives. All that happens while the world sleeps. So take care, be safe. And I think we are marching on to uh, better days, right? With the uh, hopes and dreams. May the stars lead us on to safer days, a safer world where humans and all other lives will be happier. So, good night today. And make sure if you have a coffee at night, it doesn't keep you awake. And if you are awake, make sure enjoy the night sky. Whether it's a new moon, or the stars are bright. So, starry, starry night. Remember that song? And going back, retracing to childhood. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Ha! Huh. But and then, these songs, the childhood ones, are what 
keeps us alive the dreams. It's a lullaby we sing to our grandchildren and small children to get them to sleep. But so surprising, isn't it, that in those days actually we spoke more of the truths of life than we dared to speak now as adults. So, until we meet again, thank you for being there. And thank you to Amherst Media Faith for putting this all this together and making my show happen. Thank you very much. See you again soon.